of uh, censure. I don't have it easy. There are people within the NDC and outside the NDC who say, and the minority failed. The question I ask, failed to do what? Ghanaian people didn't give NDC other than 137 seats. Currently, probably with 136, because one is not able to participate actively and fully as he should. The member for Asin North in uh, our deliberations. I was convinced that uh, given the public posture and public pronouncements of our colleagues opposite the aisle, they will support me with some 47, 67 votes so that I could seal and get a two thirds majority. You saw them walk out and boycott it, just as they did to COVID. I've had a rare privilege to serve the Republic as Minister for Communications. My footprints are there. Employment. Uh, Minister for Trade and Industry, my footprints are there. Minister for Employment, my footprints are there. Even as minority leader, you may like or dislike Haruna. At least I got a speaker elected. I got a budget re uh, rejected and installed. I got a Japa rejected. Uh, I got a debt exchange which is still struggling to uh, be approved in service of the people. The Tamale South seat is free, it's open. When nominations open, you can come in. The only thing I can assure you is that <laughs> you won't get more than 5% of the vote, or probably 2%. Yeah. I serve as unfed, I serve on NIC, I go to Council of Elders as an observer, and I also on the political committee as an observer. Congress, all of us as members of parliament, are had members had of Congress. Had, had not used, and the uh, minority leader is also on this, all these levels. At no such meeting was there any agenda to discuss this. So it is clear that it is a letter, yes, written by the general secretary, but the decision may be just the decision of some few people in the party. And the most uh, shocking part of it is that we were never consulted. I mean, I, I heard some of the officers saying that, that some elders were sent to talk to us. I'll be very happy to be mentioned which elder was sent to me to talk to me, because nobody has spoke to me. And uh, without uh, casting any situation and also uh, creating doubt on the capability of our colleagues, I'll just recap, in 2021, the party led by the then national chairman, uh, uh, Honorable of Osama and, and the General Secretary yes. came to our purpose meeting. They came and then names were sealed, so suggested names. And I remember very well, the first question they asked the General Purpose was, do you want to retain your leadership or you want to change them? And there was a, a row applause that no want to maintain them. Even that, they said they wanted to be sure because there were some other names that were also coming up. Each regional purpose was asked to go back and having the names that had come up, consider what the, the address, seal it in an envelope and give it to the, the National Party, which is exactly what happened. So it was taken to the political committee, it was summarized, and then there was another caucus meeting to announce the decision from the various 16 regional caucuses. Who did they consult? We are practicing a democracy. And this NDC, everybody, nobody in NDC is bigger than the NDC. I have never seen any parliament where a leadership of that parliament, particularly the caucus of the parliament, leadership is imposed on the caucus. What they should have done was to consult us. And all the experiences I have had and what I have gone through and what I read, usually they will propose the parliamentary caucus and the caucus will take a decision. Now, why would you impose leaders on us? The first question is, has anybody in parliament told the party or some members of the national executive that we are dissatisfied with our leadership? They need to tell us. Two, have, have, have they consulted or did they consult the leadership of even the caucus, even those who are taken out? My understanding is that they were not even consulted. Mm. I mean, natural justice demands that if you have leadership and you want to change them, call them. Look, for ABCD reason, we think that we want to change you people. They were not consulted. So it looks as if they are being hounded out. And that is why I think that it is not appropriate. And in any case, the timing is completely wrong. This is not the time we should be rocking the boat. This is not the time we should be engaging. As I talk to you now, there are the main issues that Ghanaians are preoccupied with. That, 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 that restructuring, 
the Auditor General's report, these are, are of very important issues to the Ghanaian people. Right. So, you know what happened in Parliament, uh, there was uh, a letter. Uh, well, Joy News broke the story before uh, that letter came out uh, that said, a letter from the National Executive of the NDC that said that changes have been made to the uh, leadership of the NDC in Parliament. Uh, Haruna Idrisu, the minority leader, makes way for Dr. Kaisel Atoforsen. James Kluche Aveji makes way for Ama Kofibua as Deputy Minor Minority Leader. Muntaka Mohammed Mubarak makes way for Kwame Agboja as Minority Chief Whip. Ibrahim Ahmed uh, maintains his position as First Deputy Minority Whip. Comfort Doyo Kujo uh, also keeps her position as Second Deputy Minority chief whip and this has brought a lot of disquiet within the NDC. There have been press conferences almost all over the country for and against and then the leadership in parliament itself uh, or the caucus in parliament itself has been divided and some held a press conference and said they still recognize Harunes group as the leadership. So let's start. <laughs> So, they, there are those who say the MPP is happy. <laughs> because at least, at least for this part of the week and perhaps a few days to come, we'll not be discussing the issues that you know, affect no, no, the MPP. No, not really. You know what makes uh, some of us sad? That they are seeking to come back and govern this country. And they can't manage 137 people. 137 people, they can't manage them. And this is the chaos we are all visited with. Look, you, you remember what was happening at your headquarters when you won it's election? It's not 137. You, you at your that headquarters? That was not 137. Okay. That was millions of people. But 137, <laughs> you can't manage. All right. So that's a problem. <laughs> you can't manage 137 people and you want to manage 28, 30 million Ghanaians. Mm. So that's a, a kind of NDC for you. But of course, some of us know this will happen because it goes to confirm the deep cracks within the NDC and the long head rivalry between Arun Edrizo and John Mahama. You remember? Deep cracks and they beat you to uh, get a speaker? Oh, I'm telling you, between John Mahama and Harun Edrisu, when Harun Edrisu said he won't speaker, Mahama was not in the equation. But now Mahama is coming into the equation because he played a key role in the NDC national e elections. And uh, Harun Edrisu issued a disclaimer after Ahmed Ibrahim said that the minority leader had sent him to send a, 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 a message to delegate that the parliament is with. I said, don't get here. And he issued a disclaimer that no, I didn't say so. I said, okay, wait, I'm coming. So when he won, obviously, I, I expected this to happen. So that's a said, don't That's not John Mahama. Why but I'm Mahama? saying that. I said, don't get here, said they had consulted John Mahama. And the worst of all this is that the reason for this is to say that the 2024 elections will be fought on the uh, line of economics. For that reason, they need a two forcing. I can't take it at anything away from him. He's a fine gentleman. He's one guy, whoever he sees in parliament, he has a good relationship with all of us. I, I can't take anything from him. But if the explanation is that they need an economist or a finance person to lead them in parliament, 137, what about the one you are seeking to lead 30 million people who is not an economist? You see the confusion the NDC itself is with. You are telling us that 137 people should be led by an economist. But the one you are seeking, a preemptive leader you are seeking for the NDC to lead this country is not an economist. Essentially, Look, when, you, when you read their opposition, those right. who are opposed, right. they are not opposed to the change. I'm coming there. They appear to be opposed to the process. That, that's fine. But I'm saying that. Is it, is it, obviously, fair? Is it fair that they say that they ought to have been consulted? People have, and I called some of the MPs well, too. Kofi, they were completely my, unaware. My, my friend Kofi was a national officer. And I'm sure some of these decisions were taken when he was a national uh, deputy general secretary of the party. Of course, as a deputy general secretary, he was an insider. I don't know the processes they used to do that. But it was obvious that right after your elections, mm. 
Those who supported and publicly declared support for the national chairman have been maintained. Mm. And those who opposed have been kicked out. There's been long running battle between the speaker and the outgoing or outgoing chief whip, Harun uh, uh, Muntaka, in parliament. We all know. So it was obvious that the system was not comfortable with him. They would get rid of him. And of course, when Dr. Dufo was asked, if you are elected a flag bearer, who in the NDC would you consider to be your running mate? And he quickly said, ah, Bagwin is there, Haruna is there. So I can pick any of them. Once Haruna's name is mentioned, he becomes a threat to Jomohama. Get rid of him so that he doesn't become the, uh, uh, the running mate. If he has an ambition to become the running mate, then obviously he will go against me. These are things that are being discussed among the NDC. Okay. And we hear this every day. But nonetheless, nonetheless, the party or the seven and the processes of selecting leaders to represent us in parliament. Some people had questioned that, that parliament should have or clothed with the capacity enough to be able to select its own leaders. But the party is in there that the national party can write to parliament and select its leadership for them. These are your standing orders. Yes, I'm, I'm making reference. I'm coming. Standing orders uh, of the parliament of, of Ghana. Ghana. That's right. Revised, 1st November 2000. I'll come to the 20, yes. uh, 2013 one. One. That's um, right. Now, 2000. It says, who is a minority leader or yes. majority leader? It says, minority leader means a member of parliament designated by the party. And party starts with capital P. Yeah. Having the largest numerical strength mm. in parliament other than the party that has formed the government mm. as a recognized leader of all the minority groups in the house. Mm. So in this, your standing orders, the decision was a party decision. Right. But you have revised it. That revision has not yet been adopted. Exactly. But in law, what is progressive is what we normally like to do with. Exactly. And in that one, you have said that the minority leader is the one designated by the party and or the caucus. Exactly. <laughs> so is it not fair that their demand that there ought to have been consultation I'm not taking away it. Should have taken place. You see, where we are, okay, who Haruna Idriso is in parliament, having been a minority, having seen a minority leader being reshuffled the way it's been done. So it is fair to consult. Like uh, Muntaka just said, that they've not been consulted. The party is saying they've consulted them. They've even had meetings with them. But the people involved are saying that they have not. So who is telling us the truth? And he says that he wish that somebody owns up to say that I've been sent to you to come and talk to you about these matters. So for me, this is an There are many other members who have confirmed that they were not consulted. They were not consulted. So clearly, I think this was a coup, just as you described it. It's an internal coup of the NDC. And it goes, I mean, people have made public pronouncement even before. Like my good friend, uh, Okujetua Blackwa has said, anybody who attempts to contest John Mahama is a waste of time and all that, which is preemptive, which is not correct, it's not democratic. So it goes to suggest that they are trying to protect John Mahama for the elections. So any supposed dissent view, they have to cramp down on that view. And exactly what they've done. But, so for but me, Aruna is not against Mahama. Uh, but when they've been, he's been tipped to be a running mate, he needs to support the one who becomes a flag bearer to make him a running mate. <laughs> you get that? When Haruna, Haruna, mm -hmm. he took a demonstration from his constituency as is happening today to be brought into John Mahama's government. When former President Mahama took office, he took a demonstration from his constituency that why was he left out of government? He was okay. a communications minister. When he came, he took him off communication. Mm. But that's the prerogative of the president. Right. But um, he took demonstrations mm. from Temale South mm. to get him into government. All right. So let, these let, are antecedents that we can, lay, we can uh, add to the discussion. Right. Uh, Dr. Dr. Thierry Champong, the, the party has issued some, a number of statements, and they are urging calm. The petition that uh, the opposing group has taken to uh, the, the Council of Elders to intervene and to do something, they say they have... Uh, received it and they are taking steps and so on. Meanwhile, uh, they should all exercise, you know, restraints. What do you say about how this is being conducted and the potential impact, if any, on the chances of the NDC in the 2024 elections? Yeah, I, I think there are question marks on the, on the process. And I must say that um, I don't know enough about NDC internal politics. Um, and all of that. But clearly, 
from the statements and from the posturing and from the things that we've seen, um, it looks as though there was not enough consultations um, on that on that process or with that process. I think Haruna um, Muntaka and Abedi, um, looking or from where I sit, they've actually performed creditably well, right, as the leadership of the minority in actually holding government to account. There were question marks about what this hung parliament would mean for the country. And I recall there were even conversations about uh, there might be some potential um, horse trading and, and things like that. But I think by and large, they've been able to hold the, the government to, to account and the quality of governance um, from the parliamentary side of things has actually um, improved with this 137, you know, split house um, each. So for them to be reached up old, um, then tells perhaps um, some of us that there are other factors or considerations at play and not necessarily because of the, uh, um, uh, the work that they're doing in parliament and for the party. That's sort of how I'm, I'm, I'm reading it. But clearly, you can see that the process of that change has not been uh, managed well. And, and, and the pushback um, of all of that or the ripple effect, of course, could potentially have some impact uh, on the party's um, uh, um, chances. But it's too early in the day to pontificate to what extent that, if any, would impact the, the, the party's chances uh, come 2024. Well, um, uh, Suleiman Haruna has such a, a massive support in the northern region, particularly in his constituency. And he's been winning consistently on the 70, 70 plus, you know, percentage mark. And people say uh, if his constituency executives are issuing threats that this is not the way to treat, you know, our, our, our man, it could, have, it could have some consequences. And if the rumors and the speculations about, you know, personal interests, you know, leading this are true, then these cracks will, will be there in 2024. Well, uh, Samson, I, I honestly think that the process that has been used for this has been very, very abysmal. There is no doubt that once the party has elected its leaders, the leadership of the party, whether it's the National Executive Council, the Functional Executive Committee, Council of Elders, whatever the composition of the leadership of the party is, the, the, that group has a responsibility in managing the entire affairs of the party. When you look at the NDC constitution, um, I think it was adopted in Kumasi in 2014. I don't know if there have been some amendments. But this is something that I found on the party's uh, website. Uh, it, it, it lists the parliamentary group as an organ within the party. And therefore, uh, in terms of its management, uh, who becomes the leader and all of that, is a decision by the party. So I think that constitutionally, as far as the party constitution is concerned, uh, nobody can you know, fault the, uh, the national executives. But if you have somebody who has been your leader for the last uh, five to six years as minority leader and uh, minority chief whip, I think that you ought to treat them with some um, dignity because the way it's been done, when I saw it, well, yeah, oh, Aruna is going, oh, this person is going, oh, wow, well, it's a decision by the party. But I was quite surprised to learn later that this was just simply done uh, as an instruction or, or you know, a communication to the uh, speaker saying this is what the party has done without hmm. consultations within um, the caucus of, 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 of the party in parliament. And from all the reactions, it's quite clear. If you look at somebody like uh, Honorable Kletus Avoka, he's hmm. one of the most experienced people in parliament. He's been a majority leader before. Um, and so you can't take his views on matters like these for granted. Plus, you talk about the popularity of the, the minority leader, the minority chief whip. In 2020, for example, Aruna had, um, John Mahama had 68.41% in Tamale South, and Aruna had 73%. 
In terms of real figures, Haruna had 12,108 more votes than John Mahama in his constituency. If you take Honorable Muntaka, uh, John Mahama got 57.16, and Honorable Muntaka had 66.36. In terms of actual figures, Honorable Muntaka had 14,199 more votes than John Mahama in the Asamasi constituency. And that's a shaky I, constituency. Yes, in his constituency. And this is Ashanti region. So certainly these are not people that one would say, oh, well, they are smart, they, are, they have a, 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 enough parliamentary mm -hmm. experience, they are liked by their caucus members and all of that. But even in terms of their constituencies, and if you follow politics in Ghana, you, you no doubt have heard that when it comes to the northern region, Haruna just doesn't command his constituency. In fact, within the NDC caucus, it is said that, look, if you are contesting in any constituency within the northern region mm. and you don't have the backing or support of Haruna, you are not going to make it. Mm. And there have been a lot of you know, instances that people can point to. So, 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 Sule, because of what you are saying, in these circumstances, this is a current that he should be swimming along to keep his pedigree and the future that the generality of the Ghanaian public, including President Akufuado, projects that he will get into in the uh, governance of this country, rather than fight it. Because if he does, then he could, you know, shoot himself in the foot. You don't think so? Well, I agree with you. And um, up until now, I don't think that I would take any, any reaction that I've heard from the, minor, the outgoing minority leader as constituting a fight back. I believe that the circumstances in which you know, he was ousted, if it were you and I, we can't, it is difficult to simply just keep quiet because to do so, a lot of allegations will come up. Oh, they say Haruna was doing this. Oh, they say Haruna might be in bed with this and so on. So at least he needs to be heard. And um, I don't think that he's made the point that whether you like it or not, I have the support of my caucus in parliament and I'm going right. to stay on. Okay. Going to act. So I think it's basically yeah. a reaction that I believe is justified. All right. And so far, that is certainly not going to undermine the... Okay, uh, let's see what the Council of Elders do. They say they are going to be expeditious about the request, you know, to uh, look into the matter for uh, what has happened. Yes, uh, Kofi. Um, we have just a Two couple of uh, minutes to go. Two minutes. Well, there's nothing to, to, say. to say apart from to deny the speculations <laughs> from all these persons. In any case, one, John Mahama, as chairman of economic management team, the resource is out there. It's hey, clear. You are. Single digit inflation <laughs> for the longest time we have ever had. Growth rate of 14% GDP growth rate and many other interventions. As president, he handed over this country debt to GDP at 56%. Inflation was at 9.5%. Interest rates were lower than we are experiencing today. So his record, when it comes to management of economy, vis-a-vis, -vis, please, when you were talking, I kept quiet. Vis-a-vis, <laughs> -vis, that of this government is there to see. So he's talked about economists, or what have you, have answered him. You don't belong two. to the 70 plus two. MPs who are two. against the procedure. Two. two, Haruna. There has not been, what you are talking about sort of procedure that we have ever used. The biggest platform of the party is the National Congress. Honorable Haruna spoke at the Congress. He addressed His Excellency John Dramani Mahama as presumptive leader. He is one person who had been calling for an early uh, uh, conference to elect a flag bearer. He wished we are not doing it in May. He wished we could have done it earlier. So John Mahama could have the authority as leader of the party to prosecute his agenda. Mm. So anyone who comes to peddle falsehood here that Haruna is against His uh, Excellency uh, 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 John Dramani Mahama is so. false. Mm. Finally, uh, finally, that time is up. The, the constitution of the party mm and our standing orders are really very clear. Mm. And I think that call for consultation, consult. If you ask them, who were they to consult with? I have been told that the persons exiting um, were engaged. Okay. 
Well, they have so, a different view. So it Thank is you. others. They themselves have not come right. to tell us Thank that you. they were not engaged. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, my guest, for this morning on Newsfile. This is your most authoritative uh, news analysis platform. And it's brought to you by Bank of Africa, MTN, HS University, Robert and Sans Optical Services, um, My Way Insurance, St. Thomas Eye uh, Care. Uh, and some breaking news that we are learning is that um, in the matter of the Capital Bank uh, case, um, uh, uh, Atu Asian, William Atu Asian, has filed an appeal uh, against the decision uh, because he's not happy that uh, he will be brought uh, to be put into, as it were, jail or face custodial sentence if he's not able to pay uh, the sums in the manner that he's required to pay. As you know, he was to pay uh, 90 million. He already paid 30 million. And he's required by the uh, 28th of April, I think, yeah, 28th of April 2023, to make another 20 million payment. Uh, among uh, his arguments, we understand, is that the economy uh, is in such a situation <laughs> that uh, the existing economic circumstances uh, can be basis for a reasonable you know explanation not to warrant an automatic imprisonment if he is not able uh, to pay the money in the time that it is required so that's the breaking news that there is an appeal against the decision that he submitted to himself this show is brought to you by habil scruter and that's my outfit and you can find Habil Scruter at uh, Adringano Gate, East Legon. Uh, you can call them 0200 1988 My guests have been Kofi Adams, MP Buem, and member Public Accounts, Defense and Interior Committees of Parliament. Sylvester Tete is MP Botiano, English Yamanfro, and Vice Chairman, Communication Committee of Parliament. Suleiman Ibrahima is Executive Director, Media Foundation for West Africa. Dr. Theo Champong is Economist and Political Risk Analyst. Elia, we spoke to Senior Hussi, Convener Individual Bondholders Forum. I'm Samson Ladia Yanini. Have a good afternoon.